Hello, I'm Dr. Si Lau. I'm the Director of Cerebrovascular and Endovascular Surgery at Houston Methodist Sugarland Hospital. Today, I will talk about the treatment of intracranial atherosclerotic disease. Based on clinical trials, we know that the best management options for intracranial atherosclerotic disease is medical treatment. However, for patients who fail medical management and continue to have stroke-like symptoms, they may benefit from endovascular therapy or open surgery. And I'll present two cases where we use these two treatment modalities to manage patients with intracranial atherosclerotic disease that fail medical management. The first patient is a 68-year-old male who presents with episodes of expressive aphasia and progressive decline in cognitive function. This patient failed best medical management, including antiplatelet therapy, blood pressure management, treatment for their diabetes, and cholesterol medication. His workup revealed left internal carotid artery tendon stenosis along the petrous and cavernous segment, as you can see here on the angiogram results. Unfortunately, this patient did not have any significant collaterals. So you can imagine, based on the location of the stenosis, open surgical treatment is not an option. And there are also limitations with endovascular treatment due to potential aortic arch disease and potential embolization due to the inability to deploy distal protection device in these locations. Therefore, the treatment with endovascular therapy carries increased risk of stroke. So with these limitations in mind, I thought that this patient would be an ideal candidate using the TCAR approach for revascularization. This is a very powerful technique in that it allows us to reverse the blood flow from the internal carotid artery back into the common carotid artery and the blood will eventually go through a filter device where you can see in the middle before it re-enters the body through the femoral vein. So you can imagine this is a very effective technique in that any potential emboli that is formed during the procedure will be captured by this filter device. So this patient underwent successful angioplasty through the TCA technique to revascularize the stenosis. And you can see the pre and post treatment angiogram with significant improvement of the stenosis. This patient did great and was discharged from the hospital on post up day one and had full recovery. The patient had remained asymptomatic since the treatment. You can see the picture on the right. This is the filter we used during the procedure. And we opened up the filter after the procedure, and we identified there are numerous plaques that was captured by the filter. If we did not use the TCAR technique and had proceeded with traditional endovascular approach, this plaque would have gone to the brain and caused numerous strokes. The TCAR technique, as I mentioned earlier, was designed to treat cervical carotid artery disease. But this ability to reverse the intracranial blood flow to prevent embolization to the brain is very effective and allow us to treat patients with intracranial atherosclerotic diseases as well. We recently published our clinical series using this technique and was able to achieve excellent clinical results. The second patient is a 64-year-old male who has a history of brainstem stroke and presents with syncope episodes during embolation Patient failed best medical management. As you can imagine, this symptom can be very debilitating to our patient. On the cere cerebral angiogram, patient has extensive intracranial atherosclerotic disease, primarily along the posterior circulation. The left vertebral artery occludes at the level of V3 and does not provide any significant flow intracranially. The right vertebral artery terminates beyond the pica and only provides flow to the superior portion of the intracranial posterior fossa through delayed peer collateral, as you can see on the angiogram in the middle, during the late arterial phase. In the anterior, his left anterior circulation does not provide any significant flow to the posterior fossa, and only provides limited amount of flow through peer collateral during the late arterial phase as well. Based on the angiogram results, we can expect that patient has severe hypoperfusion in the posterior fossa, primarily on the left side 
along the superior cerebellar artery distribution. And this is exactly what we saw on the CT perfusion study. Since patients fail medical management and continue to have debilitating symptoms, patients would like to proceed with surgical intervention. Unfortunately, the patient was not a candidate for endovascular treatment due to complete occlusions of both vertebral arteries. Patient underwent successful occipital artery to superior cerebellar artery bypass and recovered well from the, from the procedure. Patient remained asymptomatic since the operation. And on the bottom, you see the perfusion study after the treatment, which shows significant improvement in the perfusion to the brain stem. Cerebral bypass for posterior circulation atherosclerotic disease is extremely rare. Recently, we published our experience, and to the best of our knowledge, this is the largest clinical series in the literature describing our technique, how we manage patients with this condition. And I have to remind the audience that the best option for the treatment of intracranial atherosclerotic disease is medical management. We will only consider intervention on, for patients who fail medical management. And in those patients, oftentimes endovascular therapy would be best. But for those who are not candidate for endovascular therapy, we may consider open surgery. I'm Dr. Si Lau. I'm with the Houston Methodist Neurological Institute. Thank you for listening to my presentation.